Amen. Why don't we lift our hands all across the house and love the Lord for a moment? Come on, if you love him, would you just stretch your hands out as a universal sign of surrender and just magnify him for just a moment? Lord, we love you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Why don't you just press a little bit right here? Why don't we break something open before we get into the word? Hallelujah. Come on, continue in that vein. Continue in that vein. Hallelujah. Come on, one body, one mind, one accord. Everybody, lift your hands and lift your voices and let's shred the atmosphere with an authoritative apostolic prayer meeting for just a moment. Amen, amen, amen. Well, it has been an exciting couple of nights. I said it's been an exciting couple of nights. I'm thankful for all that God has done in these last two services, starting at Brother Wicker's church in Kenai continuing into Brother Glover's church in Sterling and expecting a mighty outpouring tonight. I'm probably going to say it wrong, but in Soldatna. <laughs> Is that right? My Lord, have mercy. We are having revival around here. I'm pronouncing things right. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Turn to somebody, give them a high five, and say, God's going to do it tonight. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Give honor to Brother Mendenhall, who is not here, and to his family tonight. I want to thank him for, I believe, putting this together. I think he coordinated with Brother Glover and Brother Wicker, and all of this got organized. And uh, I want to give him honor tonight, though he's not here. Uh, I want to thank him. I want to give honor to Brother Wicker tonight and to Brother Glover great men of God, thankful for all of the prayer that has gone into these services. I have failed to mention that, and I want to say you can really feel when a revival has been covered in prayer and has been primed, the atmosphere has been set for what God's going to do. And I want to thank everybody that's here for any time that you have put into prayer for the work of the Holy Ghost that has been taking place. Amen. To all the student pastors that are here, Brother Levi, Brother Ray, thank you so much. I'm, I'm just so honored to be here tonight. Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 5. The book of 2 Samuel chapter 5, uh, verse number 19. We started the first night preaching about worship. We preached last night, ended with worship. And tonight, I just want God to permanently do some things. I'm going to talk to us tonight, but I don't talk very much, but it sounds good at least, uh, about breaking through to break forth. Um, I believe we make breakthrough the destination of our services and the destination of our moments as God's people. We feel like when we have broken through, we've gotten all that God wants for us. But I pray that before this service is over, that every time we enter into a prayer meeting, we would no longer say, Lord, just break through, but we would ask that there would be a breaking forth. And hopefully that'll make sense before we're done here tonight. Second Samuel chapter 5, verse number 19, if you have it, shout amen. 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 And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines without deliver them into mine hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thine hand. And David came to bel Perazim, and David smote them there, and said, The Lord hath broken forth upon mine enemies before me as the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place bel Perazim, and there they left uh, their images, and David and his men burned them, and the Philistines came up yet again." 
the Philistines came up yet again and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And when David inquired of the Lord this time, he asked and said, Lord, do I go up again? And the Lord said, thou shalt not go up, but fetch a compass behind them and come up upon them over against the mulberry trees. And let it be when thou hearest the sound of going in the tops of the mulberry trees. One translation says, when you hear the angelic force go before you. When you hear the sound of the going in the mulberry trees, that thou shalt bestir thyself, for then shall the Lord go out before thee. The first time David went, this time the Lord went. The Lord shall go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. And David did so as the Lord commanded him, and he smote the Philistines from Gibeah to Gazir. And those will make sense here in just a few moments. Like I said, I want to preach to you on this subject, breakthrough to break forth. Would you close your Bible, set them down beside you? Would you lift your hands all across the house one more time? And would you ask that God would have his divine will in this service tonight? Lord, anoint me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, God. Let divine revelation flow, God. Illuminate, God, in this place. Lord, I pray, God, that you would do something in this service that you have never done before. Take us to another dimension, God. Take us to a new place in you tonight, Jesus. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would not just break through in this service, God. Lord, that you would break forth in every heart that you would break forth in every mind, that you would break forth in Sterling and Soldatna and Kenai, Lord. Lord, that you would break forth in every young person that is here. Lord, that you would break forth in every church that is represented here. Lord, that you would break forth in every home that is represented here. Lord, that you would do a divine work that could not be stopped by the enemy. Lord, that you would do a divine work that could not be hindered by man, Lord. Uh, but Lord, that you would do something in this service tonight uh, that would change the course of our lives, God. Take us to a place in you, God. Take us to a location in you, God. Do what only you can do in this service tonight, Jesus. I pray that you would unleash the gifts of the Spirit to begin to flow, God. That you would confirm your word with signs following, God. Come on, lift your voices one more time. I feel something shaking right here. Lift your voices. Io toro lo bosha. I andare tele he a toro lo bosha. Io tori a tala ha e satala ha. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Would you clap your hands one more time? Would you shout hallelujah? Oh, come on. Shout it like you mean it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. High five your neighbor before you're seated and say, break forth in this place. Amen, amen, amen. If you have been in this for any time at all, you would have come into an encounter with the Lord of breakthrough. As a matter of fact, the day that you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in a new tongue, it was at that moment that you lift your hands and that you repented of your sins. And for the first time, God broke through in your life. From that very moment until now, I have no doubt that everybody in this building has been in a time or a situation in your life where you got down on your knees or you found yourself in a prayer closet or you made your way to an apostolic altar call.
You lifted your hands and you begin to ask God to do something in your life. And at that very moment, you felt the holy touch of the Holy Ghost come down upon you. And you felt God begin to break through in your life. You felt him begin to break through in the situation of which you had presented unto him. You begin to feel him to break through in the sickness that you come into the house of God with. And before you left, you felt healed and you felt set free and you felt delivered because God is a God of breakthrough. A very popular song swept across our organization that everybody sings, and it goes a little like this. Breakthrough in my heart, breakthrough in my mind, breakthrough in my soul, breakthrough in my family, breakthrough in my home. And then he just goes ahead and names every day of the week. He says, breakthrough on Monday and on Tuesday and on Wednesday. There's never a day or a moment in our lives where God cannot show up and say, I'll show you there's nothing that is too strong for me. I will show you that there is nothing that is too great for me. I will show you that there is no mountain that I cannot move, that there is no darkness that I cannot illuminate, that there is no sickness that I cannot heal, that there is absolutely nothing that God cannot show himself as a God of breakthrough. Amen. Do you believe that tonight? I pray that before this service is over, that every person that is under the sound of my voice, that the God of breakthrough would show up in your life. Uh, I have no doubt that you've come into the house of God with a need. Uh, you've come into the house of God with an issue. Uh, you've come into the house of God asking him to do something special in your life. I want to say to you tonight, uh, you can have an encounter with a God of breakthrough. Uh, he can break through your depression. Uh, he can break through your anxiety. Uh, he can break through your sickness. Uh, he can break through your family problems. Uh, he can break through. Come on, somebody. Uh, God is a God of breakthrough. Uh, I said God is a God of breakthrough. There is not a moment in the Word of God that he does not show himself as the God of breakthrough. Uh, in Genesis, he was the creator and the promise redeemer. In Exodus, he was the Passover lamb. Uh, in Leviticus, he was the high priest. Uh, in Numbers, he was water in the desert. Uh, in Deuteronomy, he became the curse for us. Uh, in Joshua, he was the commander of the army of the Lord. Uh, in Judges, he delivered us from injustice. Uh, in Ruth, he was the kinsman redeemer. In 1 Samuel, he is all in one. He is prophet, priest, and king. In 2 Samuel, he is king of grace and love. In 1 Kings, he is a ruler greater than Solomon. In 2 Kings, he is a powerful prophet. In 1 Chronicles, he's the son of David that is coming to rule. In 2 Chronicles, he is the king who reigns eternally. In Ezra, he is a priest proclaiming freedom. In Nehemiah, he's the one that restores what was broken down. In Esther, he is a protector of his people. In Job, he is a mediator between God and man. In Psalms, he is our song in the morning and in the night. In Proverbs, he's our wisdom. In Ecclesiastes, he's our meaning for life. In the Song of Solomon, he is the author of the faithful. In Isaiah, he's a suffering servant. In Jeremiah, he's a weeping Messiah. In Lamentation, he assumes God's wrath for us. In Ezekiel, he's the son of man. In Daniel, he's a stranger in the fire with us. In Hosea, he's the faithful husband, even when we run away. In Joel, he is sending his spirit to his people. In Amos, he delivers justice to the oppressed. In Obadiah, he's a judge of those who do evil. In Jonah, he's the greatest missionary. In Micah, he cast our sin into the sea of forgetfulness. In Nahum, he proclaims future world peace. We cannot even imagine. Please don't let me bore you. I'm just trying to remind God's people for a moment. He is all that you need. He is everything. He is all everything. When I wake up in the morning, he's my breath. When I go to sleep at night, he's my rest. If you need something to take hold of tonight, take hold in Jesus. Come on, rejoice for just a moment and praise the Lord. Come on, rejoice for a moment and praise the Lord. Come on, let him break through before we go any further. Let him break through before we go any further. Lord, I pray you would break through in this place. I pray you would break through in this house. I pray you would break through among every family. 
I pray you would break through among every young person. I pray you would break through among every mind. I pray you would take us to a dimension we have never traveled, to a depth we have never sought, to a height we have never been, to a location. Break through, oh God. Break through, oh God. Break through, oh God. Come on, worship him for a moment and praise the Lord. I say on the last night of this revival, we have an apostolic eruption in this place. I say on the last night of this revival, we have a divine visitation of the Holy Ghost that we have never seen before. I say we go to a depth in the spirit we have never traveled before. I say we reach a level that we have prayed about, that we have fasted about, that we have sought for. Do not let be at ease in Zion, but let's push to a dimension. Let's push to a level. Let's go somewhere we've never traveled. Is anybody hungry for a new touch? Is anybody hungry for a new dimension? Is anybody Let me go ahead and just get off my notes and go ahead and get in the Holy Ghost for just a moment. Uh, these three nights have been no circumstance that God uh, has been put in these churches together uh, and preaching to the young people and preaching to everybody that's here. Uh, God has a divine visitation uh, for this peninsula that you have been praying for. Uh, God has a revival that you have been seeking for. Do not limit him tonight. Uh, do not limit him come Sunday. Uh, loose your faith. Uh, loose your expectation. Uh, loose God to be the God that he wants to be in your family, that he wants to be in your home, that he... Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost, God wants to break through in a way he has never broken through before. God wants to take you to a dimension you have never traveled before. God wants to take you to a location you have never dreamed of. Push just a little bit harder. Pray just a little more. Shout just a Come on, somebody. Praise him for a moment. I say we break something right now. I say we break something right now. I say before we ever get to another moment, we break the dimension. We take the ceiling off. Let's tear it down. Let's tear it down. Let's tear it down. It is the desire, I can tell you right now, undoubtedly, it is the desire of the leadership of these three churches to go to a new level. Amen. To go to a new dimension. To travel into a location of revival that you have been seeking for and you have been praying for. I'm telling you in the spirit, I see something beginning to spark in this room. It started on Wednesday night. It trickled into last night's service. And it's here right now. Do not get at ease. Do not think this another service. I say you push just a little bit harder. You push just a little bit more. God has desire to go to a new dimension. God is pulling from glory to glory. God is pulling from glory to glory. Glory. Would you stand all across this house uh, and would you magnify him? Uh, would you shake hell for a moment? Uh, would you let God know, uh, I want to go there. Uh, I want to go there. Uh, I want to go. Come on, lift your voices, one mind, one accord. 
take the ceiling off uh, and go from glory to glory. Uh, take the ceiling off uh, and go from glory to glory. Uh, take the ceiling off. Come on, loose it in Jesus' name. I said loose it in Jesus' name. This ain't about a message. This is about a movement. This ain't about a message. This is about a divine visitation of the Holy Ghost. Take the limits off of God. Take the limits off of your prayer. Take the limits off of your mind. And let God do exceedingly and abundantly and above all. Uh, right here. This is what I. This is the ceiling right here. That you nudge, and you want to let off just a little bit because it feels good. It feels like a a good place to to hold at. But there is a dimension that God is desiring to take you to tonight. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. There is a level that God is desiring to elevate you to tonight. Uh, these churches, uh, every person that's in this place, uh, there is a level of elevation that God is trying to usher into this place. Uh, there is a moment uh, of divine elevation uh, where God is trying to say, I will remove the ceiling uh, and let you step into a new dimension. Uh, one that you've been seeking for. Uh, one that you've been praying for. Uh, one that you've been fasting for. The revival of souls you've been asking me for. God is trying to pull you uh, out of that place of You see, sit down for just a moment. We're about to take it off and we're going to go into a new level tonight. David went after them the first time and got his victory the first time. The Bible says that he slew them there. He, he got victory for the first time. But the Bible says it came up yet again. You see, the dimension of breakthrough is the level that we like to encounter as people because it does feel like we have a release, but nevertheless, it's a temporary release. It's not a permanent thing. It's a thing where you come into the house of God and you feel like you went to a new place. But when you walk out, you begin to face the same thing when you come back in the next service. And you feel like you hit the same wall the next time you come into the house of God. Or you, you hit the same, the same limitation the next time you begin to pray. Or the next time you open the word of God, you don't feel like you've gone any deeper. But the last time you were in the house of God, you had a move that you felt like was a victory. And it was. But it was the victory of breakthrough, not the victory of break forth. You see, the Bible says that David slew the Philistines and they left. And when they left, they left all their idols. So David burned the idols so they could have nothing to come back to if they came back. So after he burns the idols, uh, David enjoyed a moment of freedom. He enjoyed a moment of deliverance. But the Bible says what? The Philistines came up yet again. 
they came into the camp one more time. And David is anticipating to go into battle just like he has every other time. Because David knows how to go into battle. We have mastered the art of praying our way to this level. Let me just deal with some things that I feel in the spirit. We know how to pray ourselves at to this moment. But there comes a moment where you've got to be like David. Uh, and you've just got to get up in the mulberry tree. Uh, and you've just got to say, all right, God, uh, I don't exactly know what's about to happen. Uh, but what I do know is, uh, is you promised a new dimension. Uh, so I'm just going to get up here. And the mulberry tree means the tree of weeping. So he got up into the location that God told him to be, and he just began to weep. And he just began to trust God at that moment. It doesn't make sense every time when we get nudged by the Spirit or pushed by the Holy Ghost. And we're like, but I feel a freedom, but he's still saying go to another dimension. Because I'm trying, the Lord is trying to take you from breakthrough into break forth. And he's trying to release something in the Spirit up and down this peninsula. So he says, David, get up in the mulberry tree and wait for the sound of the going in the tops. Get up into that location and just wait there and listen for my voice. Listen for my movement. So David gets up in the mulberry tree. His army is up in the mobile church. Imagine these mighty men of valor that know how to get their swords and go to work and do war and, and annihilate. Uh -huh. But this is what they're commanded to do. Just wait on me and pray and push in that mulberry tree. Kind of sounds like Romans when you know not what to pray. The Spirit shall make an intercession for itself. Just get up there and just begin to weep, David. And David began to hear the sound of the going. And the Bible says that the Lord went before them and they smote them from Gibeah to Gazir. Commentaries say that that was an 8 to 12 mile victory. Pushed them 8 to 12 miles. 8 to 12 miles, okay? This is what he did. He just started pushing them back and pushing them back and pushing them back. And pushing them back. And do you know what the land of Gazir was? It was the original territory of the Benjamites. It was the original furthest location of the children of Israel's promised land. So right when you get to the land of Gazir, you find the original border between the children of Israel and the Philistines. So when God gets ready to break forth and not just break through, this is what he does. He says, not only uh, am I going to push your enemy back, but I'm going to push them back to where they came from. He said, I'm going to send them home uh, where they can't. Come on, somebody. Is anybody ready uh, to not be facing that same old thing? Uh, is anybody ready uh, to not be fighting that same resistance, uh, that same temptation, uh, that same fight? Uh, you need to lift your voices uh, and get in the mulberry tree. So the Bible says that he pushes them from Gibeah to Gazir. It's a 12, 8 to 12 mile victory. And he pushes them back to where they came from, back to their original home. Do you know what the word Gazir means? It means cut off. So not only does he send it home, but he cuts off his ability of reentry. So when you're really ready for there to be something permanent take place. You get in the presence of God and you say, I will not stop uh, until you break through. Uh, because I know at this moment when you break through, uh, that's when I just begin to get uh, into that posture of travail. And when I hear the sound of going, uh, I know you are pushing the enemy uh, back to where he come from. Uh, and you're cutting off uh, his ability uh, to come back into my life, uh, to come back into my home, uh, to come back into my family. Somebody needs to push. Somebody needs to get in a location where you say, I'm ready to go to that new dimension. I'm ready to go to that new level. I'm ready to take that new territory. Break forth. Oh, God. Break forth. 
Stand with me all across the house. Every hand lifted. Let's be sensitive for a moment. Come on, just be sensitive to the Spirit. Before we ever make a step forward, somebody break through in this place. Recondo lo boho. Come on, right where you're at, break through before God can break forth. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Come on, don't stop. Come on, don't stop. Rosata laha. Io no rolobo sato loho. Ia ki otoria dolobo hosa. Stay standing with me. We're about to gather around the front. It was on that 8 to 12 mile victory that if you look, I call it the book of maps in the back of your Bible. You will find from Gibeah to Gazir, you will find the location of Uzziah's house. It's in verse chapter 6, I believe, right after what I just read. It begins after that victory that David goes to Uzziah's house in Gibeah, which is spelled just a little different but pronounced the same. And that's where you find the Ark of the Covenant being stored. It was on that victory of break forth that they went into Uzziah's house on their way home. And they put the Ark of the Covenant back in its rightful place. And the glory of the Lord once again began to make its way home where it belonged with the children of Israel in the holy place. And they walked among the land that God had just slayed giants and slayed many and killed all the thousands of people and just gave them all of that victory, the glory of the Lord walked right down that road. Places that have been lying dormant of the glory of the Lord. There's about to be a revisitation of the divine Shekinah glory. I'm telling you, I feel it in the Holy Ghost tonight. Now, I feel like God has broken through in this service. Without doubt, God has broken through in this service. But now it's time for him to break forth. Is anybody hungry in this room to push into a next dimension? I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost... It is here right now. It is bubbling up right now. From glory to glory. If you're ready, as it's already coming up, make your way to the front right now. 
Let's gather around this altar, everybody.